My combat sucks. I can't even hit the enemy properly. Let's fix that by making a target lock on system that forces the player to look at the target all the time during battle. In this devlog, I will be showing my thought process on how I fix the targeting of my combat. And by the end of this devlog, we will test the changes we've made and do a full battle mode with our enemies using the target lock on system that we will be developing. So stick around, I would really love to hear your thoughts and feedback. If you're new here, I'm June and I'm making a game where you play as a wisp, a glowing ball of light who can transform into different monster types to fend off human invaders exploiting your island home. So let's begin. Previously, my friends did a playtest for my game, and I decided to make a devlog series that addresses the bugs and their concerns about the game. One of the common feedback is about the camera setting. It seems that the camera is working against them. When they move sideways, it feels like the camera rotates to the direction they're heading, making them look away from the enemy and forcing them to constantly move the mouse to have a better view of the opponent. So to fix this, I did some checking with the camera and checked Cinemachine. For those those of you who didn't know, Cinemachine is a built-in tool in Unity that deals with virtual cameras that will help you in managing your camera views and movement. When I checked Cinemachine, it was actually just a simple problem. I just had the orbit binding mode set to simple follow with the world up, which makes the camera follow the target, thus making the camera rotate accordingly when the player moves to the left or right. So I simply changed this to lock to target on assign, where the camera will follow the player as well as the player's movement to the left or right, fixing the annoying problem with the camera. With the camera issue out of the way, let's move on to a feature that I always wanted to add in our combat system, a system that would make aiming at the enemies easier. So it's either we go with an aim assist which will auto position our player to face the enemy, or we go with a classic target lock on system where the player and camera focuses on the enemy. I decided to go with the target lock on system since the aim assist type is more suited in games where the character is fast moving. Our combat is more tactical where you position yourself and find timing before hitting the enemies. Let's start by making our target lock on system by first making a ray cast. Then let's make some code that detects the enemy closest to the player's forward angle, which is zero. Then we save that enemy as our closest enemy by angle. We will use this as reference when we toggle the target lock on feature. Then let's create a new Cinemachine virtual camera that handles the camera for the lock on target. We will have it auto recenter to target heading to have the camera look at where the player is looking at. I also set the recenter time to 1 second to give it a soft lock on effect. Then we make a function that will activate the new target lock on camera when we toggle the middle mouse button. Let's also add a debug to check if the target lock on system is working. Now let's test it. Let's lock to guard 8. Then let's unlock. Let's try to lock to guard 3. It seems to be working. So we have some small issues here. First issue is with the sprinting animation when locked on. Let's fix that one. The next issue is when the enemy dies, we still lock on onto its corpse. Let's fix that one too by disabling the lock on when the enemy dies. Now let's test it. The sprinting fix seems to be working fine. Now let's try and kill this guard to check if we fix the issue with us locking to the guard even though he's dead. Let's land more hits to trigger an execute attack. There you go. Now let's check if we're still locked. Looks like it's working. Next, let's make some visual cues to the player to indicate that we are locking on the target. First, let's make a target lock border and try to put some icons. Then let's test if these icons are visible when playing. It's not really that visible, so let's just go with a simple UI. Let's go with this one for now. We'll just update the look once we polish the game in the future. Now, let's have the lock on target UI appear and disappear when toggled. Let's test that. It's working. Let's add the new lock on target UI to all our enemy models. There's also some issues with the materials and the LODs of our models. So let's also fix that as we add the new game object to the models. Let's test everything. Testing the four acolytes is impossible to beat. Let's do them in batches. Let's test the first batch and test some color variations for the border. Let's test white. Now orange, then red. I think we'll just go with the yellow. Next, the second batch. Hmm, 
it seems that we encountered some bugs with the animation for the torchbearer from our previous idle animations update. They're acting weird. Let's quickly fix that. Now let's test the last batch. Hmm, it seems that we have some issues with some animations for the guards. They defend with their swords instead of their shields. Let's try and fix that. With all models tested, let's do a full gameplay battle with the mercenaries using the new lock on target system. Let's try a risky strategy. Let's have the Acolyte hit us to lure his teammates far from him, leaving him open at the back. Now that the Acolyte no longer have guards to protect him, let's hurry and sprint. Let's try the new lock-on system as we kill the Acolyte. With the new target lock-on system, the combat now feels easy to maneuver and control. We no longer have an issue repositioning ourselves just to land a hit. The combat feels seamless now, and the camera follows the player with ease. Now that the Acolyte tries to hide behind the guards, let's lure them all out and let's circle around the back to attack the Acolyte. Let's be wary of the crippling magic though. Let's skip on sprinting to dodge that magic, then let's go in for the kill. Our smart enemy AI behaviors really makes the game more challenging. Having the Acolyte hide behind his teammates really will have us, the player, constantly think about attacks and defense at the same time. Having our skeletons dash attacks though really helps us with the mobility to reposition ourselves to beat this enemy group. Now that we have the Acolyte down, let's slowly wear down the herd by killing the weaker enemies of the group. Let's target the Torchbearer since they easily stagger. Let's start with the Shield Bash. Now that don't work well. Let's just do our hit and run tactics until the torch bearer stagger. There you go. Now for the finisher. Now for the next torch bearer. Let's do the same hit and run tactics till we wear him down. Let's do a shield bash too while we're at it. By the way, the mercenary group is just one of the many groups of enemies that you'll be encountering in our game. Actually, they are the weakest enemy group that you'll be encountering on the island. We'll be making a lot of enemy groups in the future with different behaviors, skills, and lore. Let me know down in the comments your ideas for new enemy groups that will be good for our game. One of my goal is to make this game community driven. All your ideas will be heard and I will reply to all your comments. Now that the torchbearer is down, the guards will flee for their lives. We will hunt them down one by one. Having the fleeing mechanic as one of our combat gameplays make the game dynamic. Shifting from battle mode where you focus on attacks and defense to a different gameplay where we chase them down makes it more exciting and interesting. Our smart AI behaviors are not only limited to our individual enemies. I also want our world events smart. Once we have a settlement on the island, I plan on having the guards flee to the nearest human settlement or outpost, alerting them, making them prepare for an attack. Or maybe, trigger a hunt where the enemies in the settlement will band together to hunt you down. Now this guard tripped and is going down. Now let's look for the other guards. Let's check the corners. Not here. Let's go to the lake. Oh, there he is. Let's lock on and let's chase him using our dash attacks. Let's try to wear down his poise to stagger him. Let's watch out though for guard counters. We don't have that much health left. This one is evasive. Let's drain his stamina by harassing him all the time, not giving him the chance to recover. At the same time, landing some hits to bring his poise down. Let's just repeat this method until he staggers. At the same time, let's try and dodge all his counter attack. So far, the target lock-on system is great. It really is easier now to land hits on the enemy even though we're dodging and dashing a lot. There you go, finally he staggers. Now let's do a finisher move. Now for the last one. I think he's hiding around the lake. Most of the time, they always hide at the lake. Or maybe it's upstream near the waterfall. There you go. Let's lock onto him. And let's use our dash attack skill to get close to him. As usual, our goal is to wear out his stamina by forcing him to dodge all the time. At the same time, we will land some hits to bring his poise down, making him stagger. 
let's be super careful though and watch out for counters since our health is super low. 3 to 4 hits will surely destroy us. Now he's slowly going upstream. This is an advantage to us since he no longer have a lot of space to dodge around. But at the same time, we too don't have space to evade and dodge. So let's be super careful and watch out for his moves. Even though the enemy is fleeing, their guard counters are always a threat to us. Overconfidence in our game will lead to bad outcomes. Now the enemy is moving to a corner. Let's not attack him there since it's too dangerous for us. Let's lead him to a wider area. This is a good spot. Now let's land some hits to bring his poise down. Let's hit him to lure his guard counter and immediately dodge back to prevent us from getting hit. There you go, he staggers. Now let's land some more hits to cripple him. Now he's crippled. Let's go in for the finishing kill. What do you think of the new target lock on feature? Leave a like and comment down below your thoughts. And if you want to follow the development of Wisplite, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell to get notified on new updates. On our next devlog for the bug fixing series, we'll fix our water reflections and talk about reflection probes. Till next time.